Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to talk about a really cool topic. And this is something that I've personally done in my life. It's called house hacking. And this is a great way to cut down on the cost of rent and also get into your first property that could turn into a investment property for you in the future and start giving you some passive income. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to analyze a deal, break down the numbers, and then help you decide if this is something that you might want to move forward with, or if you want to keep looking and keep looking for better deals. So I'm going to break into how I analyze numbers on house hacking deals and on multifamily deals and tell you how I come up with if I'm going to move forward or if I'm not going to move forward on the property. So hopefully you can get some ideas and start crunching these numbers on your own. So let's dive right in the video. Okay, so welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics and that's house hacking. But before you house hack, it's really important to learn some of the concepts around analyzing a deal before you move forward. Because house hacking has been a blessing for me. I got into my first house hack about two years ago and it has really, really helped me cut down on my expenses. And as a real estate agent, you know, we are on commission and we have a lot of expenses in our business. So being able to cut down on our biggest expense, which is our housing, is a huge deal. So if you're in this situation or if you're just looking to slash your rent, you know, expenses because they might be $1,500 or $2,000 a month, this can be great. And it can be also a great way to get into your first investment property that you could eventually move out of and it can start paying you money every single month. For example, on this property on the low end, the one that I'm in now, when I move out, I'm going to make between $1,500 and $2,000 a month in positive cash flow after all my expenses, after all my CapEx, all that stuff there. So I get a tremendous deal. Now, you might not be able to find that same sweet deal in this market because prices are still high, bidding wars are happening, causing people to bid over on houses, and interest rates are starting to go up. So that's going to really hit your free cash flow that you have every month. This house here that I have is, is around a 3% interest rate. Now you're probably looking at double that in interest rate. So keep that in mind when you're crunching numbers, you might not get as good of a deal as far as cash flow, but rent hacking is still a phenomenal thing. And we're gonna dive into some numbers right now. So this is how I basically analyze deals. This is two basic sides to look at. This is the no house hack approach and this is the after house hack approach. So these are all the numbers that I crunch on a traditional rental property. Now, I would suggest that you crunch these numbers before you even think about doing a house hack because not only is it important to house hack and get your, your housing expenses lower, it's also important to know that you're gonna have a real asset that you can turn into a cash flow generating machine when you leave that property, right? That's one of the big things. So we wanna calculate all this stuff and make sure that the property makes sense once you make an exit. Because again, real estate's a long-term thing. When I buy property, I wanna buy property and hold it for a long time. I'm buying little ATMs and they spit out money every single month. But if you do this the wrong way, it won't spit out money. It's gonna cost you money every month. And that's what we wanna avoid. So let's look at a example property. I just you know put some rough estimates up here. I used a mortgage calculator to crunch some of these rough estimates. So they're pretty accurate on what it would cost. Obviously property taxes vary in different parts of the country, but this will give you a good idea. First and foremost, we wanna talk about expenses. So what are expenses that you should be looking at and analyzing when you're running numbers? First and foremost is your loan. Obviously, if you're doing an FHA loan or a VA loan, whatever that looks like, you're going to probably put between zero and three and a half percent down. If you want to go for like a conventional living loan, maybe you're doing five percent down. But you want to look at your loan expenses and figure out if you're going to be paying PMI and what your average payment is going to be. Next, we want to look at property tax. Depending on the city you're buying in is going to depend how much property tax you get hit with every single Year. Now, property taxes are typically broken up into a 12-month 
you know, uh, payout plan and it's done with your mortgage escrow account. So your mortgage payment and your taxes are typically paid at the same time because your mortgage company wants to make sure you don't default on the taxes and that's just how they usually want it done. So calculate that and then you want to count, calculate your homeowner's insurance, your PMI, if you're going to get PMI, to, you know, if you're going to do an FHA loan and you're not putting, you know, 20% down. And uh, then you want to look at CapEx. Now you might be wondering, what is CapEx? Well, it's basically a capital expenditure and it's, it's not complicated. Basically the, 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 what you want to do is you want to take the gross rents and you want to use 10% of that and put that aside every single month for when something breaks, when something big breaks, you have this money in your account that's called CapEx. Okay. So in this particular property example, you know, we're going to use $1,200 per door. There's three doors. We're going to use a three unit for this example. So the property is going to make $3,600 a month in gross rent. So CapEx, what would it be? $3,660 uh, $360. because you're taking 10% of 3,600. That's 360. So now you have that number, you have your, your expenses and you have the purchase price. So you want to calculate it on the purchase price, have these numbers run by your loan officer so they can dig into this with you. You can use a calculator online too. If you want to do that depends on if you're more hands-on or hands-off. Um, there's also another website. If you don't want to do all this by hand, it's called dealcheck.io. I put a uh, affiliate link in the description below. Um, you can analyze house flips, rental properties, house hacks. It's, it's a really good tool and it's not expensive. So be sure to check that out. But back to this. So basically I'm going to use a $400,000 property rent at $1,200 per door. So that gives us expenses at about $3,079 before CapEx. When we add CapEx, we're going to go up to $3,439. Okay. You, you, that's, that's a little expensive, but you got to keep in mind, we're using almost a 6% interest rate to calculate this because the rates just shot up. Next, we want to look at what is this property going to make fully rented? 100% occupancy and everybody paying on time. What is it going to make best case scenario? And in this situation, we're going to use $1,200 per door. Now you can use pro forma rents. Um, if say, for example, you're buying the property, um, I bought this property at low rent, you know, it was 1100 on the other side and the market rent now is closer to 2000 just for one side. There's, there's a duplex. So you can, you can use that. Just be very careful with that because if you do it the wrong way and, and you, you over project, you can walk into a real bad situation if you can't get those projected numbers that you, that you estimate. So I would say highly use caution against doing that. But if you know for a fact that it can rent for that and you have experience and you are with a trusted advisor, then, then, then maybe you can put that into your equation on if you want to, you know, move forward or not. But let's just use this example, $1,200 per door. That's $3,600 a month in gross rents. So we want to take the 3,600 and minus it by the 3,439. That gives us a cash flow of $161 a month. So every month you're going to make $161. That's fully rented. You not living there. That's once you move out, you know, that's not good. I personally wouldn't buy that deal. Um, some people would, if you're in a location where maybe appreciation is crazy and you're going to speculate on the market going up, maybe you do that. I personally wouldn't buy it. I like cash flow. Um, I'm a cash flow investor. In my opinion, cash flow is the key that buys you financial freedom. And that's what I'm chasing. I'm not going to speculate um, uh, on an asset appreciating. Like if it does, that's great. But I'm really after cash flow and I'm after reliable cash flow. Right. So I wouldn't buy this, but another number to calculate is your down payment versus your cash flow. And this is going to give you your cash on cash return. Now, of course, you're still getting mortgage pay down. You're getting appreciation if the market's going up. There are other things that you're going to make money with in real estate. But just to do a cash on cash return, you want to just basically look at the free cash flow that you're going to make in your pocket every month. And then you want to divide that by your down payment. So if you're doing three and a half percent down on a $400,000 house, you're looking at about $14,000 down. So if you do the math on that, that gives you about a 7.24 cash on cash return. 
Now, a lot of people will say 7.24 is not bad. Maybe not, but you gotta keep in mind, you're using a lot of leverage and leverage is like a knob, right? It's, it's basically a, like a volume knob. And the more leverage you use, the more risk you bring into your investment. And the less leverage you use, typically the less risk, right? So the more money you put down, the lower your cash on cash return is, is going to be because you're using less leverage. So while 7.24 doesn't look bad, considering you're using so much leverage to get into the, the investment and the asset, in my opinion, I wouldn't go for this. Um, you know, on my stuff, when I when I go for properties, I, I want like 15 or 20% cash on cash minimum. Um, now, depending on how much you're putting down, that might be great or it might not be great. Uh, but something like this, I would not do this. And I'm gonna show you why. Let's dig a little deeper. Um, and again, guys, this is not investment advice. This is all my opinion. This is what I personally do. So take it with a grain of salt and get involved with trusted advisors if you're gonna go forward on this, okay? So long story short, this is this is how I crunch numbers after. So this is basically the house hack situation. So your expenses are still gonna be the same, 3,439. Things are still gonna break, you're still gonna have CapEx, you're gonna have your PMI, you're gonna have your, your loan, your taxes, your insurance, everything's gonna be the same there, okay? Next, you wanna look at your rent. You're losing $1,200 in rent because you're gonna live in one of the units. Right? So now you only have two rents coming in. 1,200 times two is 2,400. So your gross rent is gonna go down. So you're looking at 2,400. So you wanna do this number minus this number, which is gonna give you 1,039. And that is your cost to live. So you're gonna live in a three unit for 1,039. Now again, it's not a terrible deal because you're gonna get pay down. It's better than paying someone else $2,000 a month for rent. And, and you're gonna get the appreciation and all the benefits of being a homeowner. So again, it's not the worst deal in the world. Um, you're probably gonna get further ahead doing something like this than you would you know, renting something and, and paying somebody else's mortgage off. But if I were you in this situation, I wouldn't buy this deal, I would keep looking, right? And um, part of this is because of the interest rates. You know, three or four months ago, uh, this deal maybe would have made sense. You know, if you were netting maybe another $400 on top of this and you were doing what, 561 a month in positive cash flow, well, the numbers start to change a lot and they start to look a lot different. And this starts to look a lot more attractive and, and something I would probably consider moving forward on. But you gotta keep in mind, the market's changing and a lot of people are speculating on whether it's gonna keep going up or if it's gonna balance out, or if we're gonna start seeing a downtrend. And typically when interest rates rise, real estate prices fall. We haven't seen that yet. So as an investor, you might be in a little bit of a, a tight squeeze here because as, as if the, the interest rates go higher and higher and higher, it's gonna start squeezing this cash flow number. So your cash flow, your free cash flow right here is gonna get start getting squeezed by your expenses because interest rates are just another expense. So your expenses are gonna go higher and unless prices go down to counteract that, you're gonna be in a situation where the cash flow could dry up on some of these potential deals. So again, it can be done. You're just gonna have to look a little bit longer. And if you wanna crunch numbers with a more you know, consistent approach and an easier way where it's very easy and automated, check out that dealcheck.io. They, they do a good job with that stuff. It's a really cool little tool. But um, this will just give you the basic concepts of what to look for. And house hacking can be a great thing. So if you look at a house hack and you have questions about it, drop it in the comment section below. And if you're a real estate agent that hasn't considered house hacking yet, I would highly suggest it because we are in a business that is so, turbulent and so unpredictable in, in many ways. And it can be a fantastic way to start your, your portfolio and start building diversified streams of income and start building that passive income that we all long for because that's what gives us the keys to financial freedom. So if you like this video, definitely hit the like button and subscribe. We come out with content for real estate entrepreneurs on a weekly basis. So thanks so much for watching and have an awesome day.